Live from the Mandalay Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Insight 2014. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone for day two of live coverage of IBM Insight. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante and our next guest is in he Chosa, Vice President of Analytics, Big Data, everything to do with what's going on here at Insight. Looking for some great insight from Inhi today, because she's a CUBE alumna, she's been on many times, she's always awesome. Great to have you, welcome back. Thank you, John, I'm excited to be here. So you're, you've been doing a lot of presentations, your TED at IBM event in San Francisco was a fantastic keynote, uh, really bringing your A game on the content side. Here, you're on the keynote yesterday with some really epic announcements, really putting some meat on the bone, and you know, we've had a variety yeah. of conversations over the years around you know, what's going on in big data, you have some great examples, but really it's accelerating right now, a lot more speed going on in the market. Um, so first, let's, let's bang out some of the announcements. What were the key highlights yesterday, yesterday's keynote? So, uh, we had several actually, so this, I'm going to kind of riff on them very quickly. First is uh, Watson Analytics, if anyone caught the demo, it's amazing. We're bringing predictive capabilities, a very interactive uh, visualization tool, we've got cognitive capabilities so you can apply natural language, and one of the secret sauces inside is what we call data works. How do you actually refine information? Meaning, how do you take something raw and begin to play with it, massage it a bit, and shape it, cleanse it, transform it, mix it, match it, and add security elements to it in order to be able to prepare it for the targeted applications. That's actually inherently embedded in the UI experience of Watson Analytics. So, DataWorks is our new capabilities around refining and shaping information. It's not only available for embeddability in apps, we actually put it on Bluemix as discrete services so app developers can build uh, around that. In addition, we're also going to be launching some new capabilities around probabilistic matching. So we took some of our best um, algorithms around entity analytics and probabilistic matching and paralyzed that on Hadoop. Right, so you could do mass scale uh, analytics of you know customer insights, um, matching customer data with social data and other things. That's also going to be available on DataWorks. So DataWorks is our cloud-based data refinement capability. The next item we announced was uh, Cloudant Local. So many people know Cloudant, our mobile database as a service. Now you can have that and bring it on-prem to kind of the privacy of your data center. So you could have it on the go, you could have it wherever you want. Um, this is something that actually several of our clients were asking for, including one of our top um, online gaming uh, users for Cloud and said, you know, wouldn't it be great for me to look at all the user data and run analytics on it? So we then created our next announcement, which is called Dash DB. It's our really dynamic data warehousing capabilities. It has our in-memory columnar capabilities inside. It is also cloud-based. It is inherent in the Cloudant experience, so if you're in the Cloudant UI and you wanted to create an analytic warehouse, you can do that with a couple clicks of the button. Um, in addition, if you're actually a Bluemix user or a data architect or a DBA and you also want to create your own data warehouse, you can go straight onto uh, DashDB or onto Bluemix and create an instance. On top of that, we also announced, um, and this was through our learnings in terms of dealing with Watson uh, cognitive solutions and applications, that when you have a large corpus of data and it's really unstructured content, so it could be documents, files, how do you begin to massage that and curate that information for knowledge workers, data scientists, and so forth? And so Watson Curator was another piece of the announcement that was a lot. <laughs> okay, so, so I had a lot of questions. So you, guys, so, so, you, so you guys got a lot going on under the hood, so let's just yeah. connect the dots. So Dave and I were um, reviewing the Twitter um, earnings that went out yesterday and today, a lot of yeah. debate on Twitter, and stocks down, unfortunately, but really the, what they talked about is in the moment, immersive. A lot of the terms that they're talking about is what you guys are saying here at Insight about engagement, systems of engagement and also engagement. So we heard things like cohort analysis, what Twitter's throwing around, as yes. Ray Wang says, these new verbs are out there. So connect the dots between the business outcomes around engagement Engagement, because what Twitter's doing for their own business is what your customers are doing on the business side. They want to connect to the engagement, they want to connect with things, humans yeah. and devices and machines, but there's a lot of stuff going on under the hood. So connect the dots between the value of the technology 
and what the business owners want with this engagement trend. Absolutely, so when you think about um, on the business side, cloud, data, um, engagement, all of that is just, it, it creates an opportunity and confluence of capabilities and, and what it's forcing is people to kind of rethink and redefine the way they want to engage whether it's in the call center, whether it's in operations or logistics. So think about real-time demand forecasting, right? So based on weather aspects, based on social preferences, based on community conversations, based on quality of service, that could actually impact, and you want to be able to do it in the moment. You're absolutely right. We call that real-time context, and um, that's a piece that I've talked about before on theCUBE, um, and, and being able to marry uh, I would say, and integrate new types of data, Twitter being a key one, uh, new types of data, integrating that with enterprise data, right? Historically, in the enterprise, you have information like product, asset, customer, transaction, and marry that in a way that completely redefines the way you do um, sense and respond applications for operations, where the way you rethink the quality of your customer response, which is not just a reactive, man, my, cell phone is down, the network's not great, to a much more proactive and predictive understanding of the quality of an engagement is going to be, that those are key elements that we're trying to design and integrate into kind of where we're headed next. So, so I have to ask you some questions about Watson. People want to know, like, how do I buy Watson? So you mentioned uh, uh, DataWorks and you mentioned Watson Curator, you've got Watson Solutions, yep. uh, Watson Analytics. So these are products that I, I can they buy, are. correct? They they're are not actually, features. And uh, their SaaS, majority of those are actually SaaS products. Okay, so you so would you can go deliver straight. deliver those in the cloud. That's right. All right, and so I can buy Watson as a, as a solution, if I'm in healthcare, let's say for example, mm -hmm. or I can buy an, Watson Analytics, which is a development platform. That's right, right? That's And then right. these two new products, DataWorks and Watson Curator, are a SaaS, presumably a subscription-based model. Correct. That's right, that's okay. right. And so you can access all of that on the IBM uh, Cloud Marketplace, as well as in the Bluemix environment. So if you're an application developer and you're in Bluemix and you wanted to use uh, DataWorks and subscribe to the service, uh, there's actually a freemium. So it's a freemium model, both okay. for Watson Analytics, DataWorks, for DashDB and CloudIn. And then there's a, um, a charging mechanism for per user or for the enterprise or the team. Or so group. I can buy an ELA if I, I, I want. Yeah, or okay. like a group kind of but enterprise I don't have use to. it. But you don't have to. For uh, every individual, you could start with a freemium model. We really want developers and enterprise architects and um, IT engineers to, to kind of get started very easily. So if a customer so. says, I don't want any upfront cost, I don't want any ELAs, I don't want any you know, penalties if I, if I shut down. You say no problem. No problems, get started today. And actually Watson Analytics will go live in November. Right now we're in beta, so we have, um, and it's a closed beta, we're actually onboarding clients regularly. But um, the live, live uh, service will start in November. And then for DataWorks, DashDB, and Cloudant, you can actually go online today. Um, it's available, the freemiums are available today. Uh, and get started. Uh, and probabilistic matching. Yeah, Sounds really big match. Fancy. You've heard <laughs> what, about this, what, so right? Tell, big tell match us what we do. get with that, right? Okay. Big match, yep. Okay. Yeah, so one of the things we've done is, um, and it's been exciting in the lab, so we're delivering um, the capabilities around what clients are saying, look, I want the next generation of master data management capabilities, and in this next generation, I want to be able to integrate customer information with um, uh, social and public information that may be outside the enterprise. One of the things that we did was we took our unique probabilistic matching capabilities that we had actually uh, developed in the labs and also acquired through our Initiate acquisition, um, I, I would say five years ago. And then we took that unique set of algorithms and rather than running it on a relational system, we actually run it directly on Hadoop. That new on-prem offering, it's an on-premise offering, is going to be available in fourth quarter as a standalone. Now, what we're also doing is we took that and are creating a cloud-based SaaS service under DataWorks as a matching service for big data as well. So, so we you, have two. That's also running on Hadoop? And that's also running on Hadoop. And it's some kind of key value store? Or? And it has, um, yeah, there, there is a way to understand what the sort of the key values are around master data sets. Um, the other thing we've also enabled is our enterprise Hadoop as a service in the cloud. Um, that's available uh, also now in fourth quarter. And then we uh, enabled our streaming analytics geospatial service. And we also just announced our partnership with Esri, which is great. Um, no, so, and that's that, that is your, with your Hadoop distro? Yeah, okay. yeah. So Jeff Kelly last week at Big Data NYC was saying, eh, you know, with, with deference to IBM, you know, the big three Hadoop distros, not true? 
No, not, not true. true. You guys, well, it depends you guys, on what you want to do. It, uh, I mean, you I, don't really care, right? I, I mean, well, you know. no, what I would say, what I care most about is clients actually getting the value and the outcome at the end of the day, and the faster you can actually apply the insights and analytics, you get to the outcome faster. And, and, Who and cares so about just putting data The argument data would be that if, if you got a solution yeah. that's all okay. IBM, you can get there faster, is that that's right? right? That's so right, So let's talk developers, because obviously you have a de developer aspect to this, and, and with dev, uh, DataWorks, and, and also, we're, again, we're, this is the me mega trend. Developers want to integrate natively into the uh, mobile applications the insights. So you have the freemium model, which is really compatible with how customers are buying and rolling out the cloud-like technologies. A lot of stuff under the hood that's shipping and available. You guys bring that goodness. Yeah. Developers, what do you guys, how do you view them? Um, how do you make it easy? Again, there's a focus on speed now this, this year. So people want to get rolling fast. Oh, yeah. How do they stand up some of these capabilities uh, and how do they integrate them into the applications? Oh, it's amazing. Within five minutes on uh, uh, Bluemix, you can actually get quickly started, you actually pick a runtime environment, you pick a set of kind of, um, a sort of set of services that you want to run and you can quickly get started. So Bluemix is really agile. One of the key elements that we wanted to enable for clients was, and especially developers, is look, you don't want to have to wait for a provision system or server. You don't want to have to wait, wait for sometimes um, uh, the financial aspects to get started. So Bluemix is our cloud-based, open kind of, built on Cloud Foundry, quite honestly, open-based architecture that allows uh, uh, developers to completely, easily compose apps. It's our platform as a service. There's a number of data management services, um, application development services, there's a, a list of run times you can pick from, and there's even what we have a section called boilerplate, which are templates for you to build other types of applications, like the Internet of Things type applications. So they're quick start modules. It's quite easy. Um, you can go straight from developing to actually running uh, in production. So, so Ray and I, and I were today were talking just about how developers a lot of going a lot of going on in house in the enterprises. Yeah. So, so that's that's awesome. So that's good good stuff there. I want to want to spend more time to drill down on that. But I want to get more to the customer side, the decision makers, the folks you're talking to that you're engaging with on your uh, in, in your interactions. What are they What are they caring about this year? What's your thoughts? Can you summarize your the totality of all your customer <laughs> meetings into a couple <laughs> minutes? Because people want to know what to do, what sequence, how do I yeah. get rolling, how do I move it into production? Yeah. What is some of the low-hanging fruit opportunities? Well, that's a great question. So, in addition to what we have on Bluemix, which is really targeted to developers and, and IT folks, um, we actually have a set of SaaS-based offerings that are more targeted to line of business. So, everything from pricing optimization to uh, capabilities around digital analytics and customer service, those are capabilities uh, part of IBM's overall Experience One and Smarter Commerce portfolios. Those are um, many of our capabilities on SaaS. In addition, Watson Analytics is a great user tool um, based on the individual user experience where business leaders and individuals are saying, you know what, I want to be able to play with the data. I want to be able to um, access it. I want to be able to understand it. I want to be able to massage it um, differently without necessarily having to call you know, uh, uh, predictive scientists that's going to write up these models, an IT engineer that provisions the data from the data sources. Uh, you know, I want to have a set of libraries that show me what my data assets are. I can shop for them very quickly. I can look at kind of different types of visual techniques. By the way, I can in, uh, you know, um, interact in natural language. Language. So those are big pieces, especially from an individual role level. From the aggregate enterprise, I would say the, the top three um, investment areas is one around um, improving and enhancing the customer experience. The second is around um, more specifically optimizing operations and assets. And then the last is um, how do you manage risk, security, and, um, and governance uh, just in general because of the, the threat of security intelligence or threats around data and data protection or even you know, fraudulent activities around claims. I mean, it's such a broad space, but the risk aspects of, of, of all those elements. So explain context computing. We've got first of all, the top three, that's consistent with Steve Mills, so you guys are all on the same, same page here. Good, <laughs> yeah. it's good to see you. He called it CAMS, which was an acronym for Cloud, Cloud Analytics, Analytics Security and yeah, Social yeah. Security. So talk Social about, talk about the, um, the um, customer environments there with, with context uh, computing. What does that mean, cognitive and cognex? Context. Oh, so context is, so we talk about real-time context computing. So there's three core elements of this. One is um, at a technology platform level, 
context is understanding relationships across different entity classes. This is when you hear Jeff Jonas talk about sense making and G2. That's a core part of um, uh, an area of investment within IBM and a core part of the area that I'm heavily focused on. Yeah. Uh, another piece of the core technology platform is our stream computing capabilities. The ability to understand data as it's coming in. in a, one piece at a time, not just in terms of large batch. It's operating in real time is a very new um, uh, mindset, but also requires completely new computing kind of capabilities to do that. The third area is what I consider a much more around um, decisioning and actioning. So you take things like complex event processing, you think about workflows, you think about higher orders of rules, but you want to marry that with some of the new capabilities around machine learning. So you want to marry all of that into a platform that allows clients, in terms of the value, what you talked about at the beginning, around real time, insight, in the moment, decisioning, in the moment, action, and when we talk about real time context, it's about that. In that moment, when you have a narrow window of time, and you want to be able to understand kind of the low signals and sense and respond very quickly. Those are kind of the next class of applications that we're working on. So if context is that, which by the way, I think it's an amazing vision. I think you're right, yeah. right on the money there. We, we're in the same religion there. So context sets the table. On top of that's the cognitive, that's the reasoning piece. Could, is, that, yeah. could, is that right? Well, uh, <laughs> Dave doesn't get a go. question. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to respect your time. I know you have a hard stop. But, uh, so cognitive it. also we'll includes. We'll keep you all day. No, no, can't go. He can't leave. We, we love it. Come on. Okay. So cognitive uh, includes not only those things, but it's also the human elements, right? It's the machine learning aspects. It's the fact that you, systems can learn the way we learn, and um, but you get to also interact much more in language, uh, in natural language. You also get to apply capabilities that where you can perceive and infer and reason, and those are higher order type analytics. It's not just, you know, um, I, I, you know traditional forms of statistics or predictive analytics. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dave, go ahead, get a question in. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm happy if you got time, can we, can we go? Or okay, go? last question. All right, so, <laughs> so I love when you guys talk about business outcomes. Um, yeah. It's just the smart thing to do, the right thing to do. Having said that, we're hearing from a lot of customers that they're sort of looking at reduction on investment and they're pay, maybe taking a dollar that we'd say would spend on a traditional data infrastructure and they're spending 30 cents on, on the new one because their storage is cheaper, their yeah. infrastructure is cheaper. Having said that, it seems to be elastic. They're spending more on, on less for each individual component, but they're spending a lot more on stuff. Do you see that sort of trade-off going on? Um, I do. I doing see more with the new? Um, I see doing more with the new, um, and part of it is about speed, right? Every enterprise, um, and I, when I talk to clients, uh, one of the key comments is that, look, your competition isn't your competition in terms of who you think they mm. are. Your competition is the last best experience that your uh, consumer actually had. That's the bar. It doesn't matter what industry they experienced it in, it doesn't even matter if they experienced it in their home, right? That's the new bar. So if that's the bar, then you have to quickly figure out how do you redesign and reset that bar to say, I've got to meet that minimum expectation and the way I engage in my call center, the way I engage in my mobile applications, the way I engage in terms of my supply chain. And so for clients, speed right now trumps so many other things and they don't want to be hindered by maybe the traditional ways in which they accessed information right. or the traditional investments that they've made. So I definitely see a shift in terms of um, a lot of money moving into systems of engagement type applications. And that yeah. leads to faster business outcomes. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Right. Awesome. Inhi, great to have you. Um, just bumper sticker the show here for the folks out there watching. What's the main theme here? If you could summarize it kind of on the bumper sticker of the car, leaving Vegas. Oh, it's all data for all people. You can put data in more places, hybrid, self-service, um, insight, um, and just outcome. We really are focused on empowering everyone in every role uh, to become uh, not only data experts, but users and, and kind of unleash the value of data here. Okay, this is theCUBE. We are here live in Las Vegas for IBM Insight. We are special presentation inside the new digital experience, second screen uh, uh, virtual conference going on here in the social media lounge. It's called Insight Go. Uh, we're proud to be part of that uh, program. Great social media, a lot of influences here, and of course we love uh, broadcasting that data from, from the noise, the signal in heat. Thank you so much. Great to see you. I know you're super busy. Really appreciate <laughs> your time. This is theCUBE. We're right back here live in Las Vegas at IBM Insight. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back. <laughs>